Packing is one of my least favorite things to do before a trip because I have all this tech stuff that I want to take, but not enough space. And this is especially a problem for me because I only travel around with one backpack because I want to save money, time, and hassle when going through the airport. So if you're having trouble figuring out what to take on your travels to get the best photo and video quality of the trip, then this video is for you. I'm going to be breaking this video up into three distinct parts, one for the casual user, the next for the amateur filmer, and then finally the prosumer. I say prosumer as the professional consumer, not an actual professional, because I'm not a professional, and I'm assuming you're not a professional either, because, come on, if you were, you wouldn't be watching this video, right? So let's get right into it. So the iPhone 15 Pro is kind of a no-brainer when it comes to casual usage because it's, you know, a phone, so it has phone, texting, maps, internet, uh, Apple Pay, all built in one. You can replace a lot of things with just a singular smartphone. But the real star of the show here is the camera, and I will start off by saying that there are other phones out there with better photo quality, in my opinion, but when it comes to video, the iPhone and Apple in general, hands down, has the best video quality. And this is coming just from the phone itself, like the point and shoot, like it'll have the best quality, no doubt. And once you include Apple Log, which is Apple's high dynamic range shooting mode, you get way more options, way more detail, way more quality for the video in the same package without having to buy another camera. It's just a no brainer choice for the casual user. So the next thing that you're going to want inside of your travel tech bag is one of these. It's a fast charging wall wart adapter. This one's from Anchor, 65 watts, three ports. I've had this for five years. It takes up no space. Look at it, compare this as my hand. It has everything that you need. It's 65 watts in this small form factor, so it can charge up your laptop, your tablet, your phone, and all three of those devices at the same time, honestly, without taking up any space at all. This is definitely a must have. And to go along with your charging brick as well as your devices, you're going to need a charging cable. I used to carry around a ton of charging cables, USB-C, lightning, micro USB, what have you. But over time, I realized that I really only needed to charge one device at a time. So I kind of pared down to only have one of each. And then eventually with my tech upgrades, I've only needed USB-C most of the time. Now I only travel around with one USB-C cable, except for one small exception. I still have to carry around a lightning cable for the next item on this list. AirPod Pros. These are the one device that I need to carry that don't use USB-C. And I could get the $100 Apple case that they sell that now has USB-C, but I'm not going to spend $100 just to not carry around a cheap cable. So AirPods Pros and my Apple lightning cable are here to stay because these are just so convenient. Noise canceling, they're wireless, they double as earplugs when you're on the airplane, et cetera, et cetera. You could also get like Sony XM4s or Bose headphones, but I really don't like over the head style because they take up more space and they kind of make my ears hot and my head hot. I like to stick with earbuds because they're just smaller, more convenient, lighter, better for travel. So the next thing on my list is actually something that's digital. It's an eSIM. So right here is the brand that I use. It's called Ubigi and it's just an eSIM provider. You download the app and you can install an eSIM on your phone. It takes less than five minutes. And after that, you can just choose any data plan that you want for any country that you're in. When I was in Japan last month, I utilized Ubigi to get 10 gigs of data for $13. So it's pretty cheap and affordable depending on where you are, but you can also have the option to shop around for local eSIM providers at like the airport or some other kiosk once you're in the area. But for me, the eSIM on my phone is just way more convenient. I can just buy it before I go and turn it on as soon as I land and I'm good to go. I could save a few dollars by shopping local, but for me, convenience is what matters the most. So if you need an eSIM and you would like to help me out, feel free to use my Ubigi referral code. It'll give you and I both a discount on our next purchase. And finally, for the casual tech loadout, I always carry around two cards. My credit card of choice is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Normally I would use an Amex card, but Amex is less widely accepted internationally compared to Visa or MasterCard. So Chase is the next best option and I'm here for versatility. So this is the best for me but you can use any credit card that you'd like. Always stick with the credit cards because you get more protection when it comes to fraud or stolen goods. So credit cards are definitely the way to go when you're traveling. And the second card that I always have handy on me is my Charles Schwab bank debit card. And for this one, I really only use it whenever I need to pull out cash from ATMs for cash only stores or restaurants. And the reason why I use a debit card instead of just exchanging my USD for whatever currency that I need 
is that Charles Schwab offers free unlimited ATM reimbursements. So I can use literally any ATM in the world and Charles Schwab will just reimburse all that at the end of the month. The benefits of that is that it's more convenient. I get the best exchange rate because ATM exchange rates are much better than what you would get at like your bank or your airport by doing a cash transfer. And this allows me to only pull out cash when I actually need it so I don't have extra leftover cash at the end of the trip. Uh, and the only reason why I'm on Schwab is because I've had it since 2017 when I think at that point Schwab was the only bank around that had that perk. But if you find something better that meets your needs, feel free to go for that. So that's it for the casual level, but if you want higher picture quality or just more options to your shots, then the amateur level might be for you. So the biggest upgrade for the amateur level is going to be the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. It's a gimbaled camera, as you can see on the top here, as well as a nice large flip-out screen. I highly recommend the Creator Kit combo, specifically because it gives you way more options when it comes to figuring out how you want to shoot. It comes with a wireless mic similar to this one, as well as a tripod, an extra battery, a wide-angle kit lens, as well as a compact carrying case, which makes it way easier to take with you on your travels. The second add-on that I recommend from the amateur level is a nice and compact portable charger. And I say nice and compact because I used to carry around huge like 20,000 milliamp hour portable batteries like this. Not like this, but like twice the size or three times the size of this. But it was way too heavy, way too bulky, and I hated carrying it around. And I really didn't use it as much as I thought I would because I wasn't really away from power outlets as much as I thought I was. And I really only recommended this in the amateur level because now we have more than two devices, which means there's more chance that something might be forgotten when it comes to charging. So these are really only for emergencies when something went wrong while charging, but you're not likely going to be charging all your devices all at once at one time with this one bank. So a nice and small compact one is all you really need. And now that you're in the amateur level, you're probably taking a lot more videos than the average user, which means you're taking up a lot more space. And so when you're out of space, you're gonna want an external SSD, like this one from SanDisk, to offload all your videos to make space for new ones. External SSDs like this can be attached directly to your iPhone, so it records all that high quality Apple log footage onto this, rather than the small storage space on your phone. And if you need to take files off of your Osmo Pocket 3, you can use the DJI Mimo app on your iPhone to then transfer it over to this wirelessly. But if you're only going on a short weekend trip, then an SSD might be overkill and you might only need a large size SD card like this one. For a large size, I recommend probably 256 as the minimum. 128 is a little bit too small, but then anything larger is a little bit too expensive. So 256 gigabytes is kind of the sweet spot. Because with 256 gigabytes, you could probably get around six hours of 4K footage off your Osmo Pocket 3, which is plenty for just a weekend trip. That was it for the amateur level, but if you still want even higher picture quality with no compromises and the most options for your film, then the prosumer option is going to be for you. And of course, the main star of the prosumer lineup is going to be a full-size camera. My full-size camera of choice is the Sony ZV-E1, and if you ignore the lens here, the body itself is quite small and compact, which is great for me when I want to travel. But the full-size camera that you choose is definitely just up to you and your preference. I like the Sony ZV-E1 because it packs a really strong punch for its size category, but you might prefer the colors of Canon or Fujifilm or Panasonic, in which case feel free to use those as your main prosumer camera. But you're not gonna just want high quality video, you're gonna want high quality audio too. And for that, I recommend a wireless microphone. And in this case, I use the DJI mic. It comes with two microphones and a receiver. I'm using one of them in my hand right now. And DJI actually came out with the mic too, which you could get as an upgrade, but there's also other options like Rode, or you could just use like your iPhone and sync it up too, if you really wanna save some money. But I recommend one of these since it records directly to your camera. It just makes things a lot more convenient and the audio sounds super crispy, so I recommend it. Now lenses are a little bit of a different story because I used to carry around two lenses, one Sony wide angle like this one, as well as a Tamron variable 28 to 75 millimeter lens. But since getting the Osmo Pocket 3, I've kind of stopped utilizing the wide angle lens as my vlogging lens. Even though it's higher picture quality, it's just a lot more cumbersome to use compared to the convenience of the Osmo Pocket 3. So in the future, to save even more weight and space, I might just stop packing this lens entirely and either switch it out for another one or just rock one lens. It's totally up to you, so choose what you feel like is the best for your use case. Next, a mini tripod with a ball head gives you way more options when it comes to filming. And the one that I've been using so far has been this Manfrotto one. I don't know what model exactly it is, but it looks like this. It's about the size of my hand, maybe a little bit larger, and it has a nice high quality, heavy duty ball mount. 
And this tripod has come in really handy when it comes to setting up shots where I need to leave my camera on more uneven surfaces. But I've also seen some shortcomings with this as well because it isn't that flexible. So if I had to upgrade, I wouldn't really use this anymore. I would use the Mantis Pod 2.0 because it gives you way more options as well as being way more versatile. If you're looking for a tripod, you can either get this for simplicity or get the Mantis Pod 2.0, which I feel like I might upgrade to in the future. Finally, but definitely not least is this, a laptop. And this might seem like a surprise to some because a laptop seems like the quintessential thing for a tech bag. But when I really thought about it, these things are really heavy, really bulky, and I really didn't need to use them as much as I thought I did. Because I really only use the laptop for work and heavy duty editing, which I prefer to do at home. But if I'm out traveling, I really don't find myself having a lot of time to sit down and get some heavy work done because I'm traveling. So whenever I go on a trip, I think about if I actually need my laptop. Am I actually gonna be doing work, getting editing done? Probably not, unless I'm staying in a place for longer than three weeks. But if it's anything less than three weeks, then my large SSD and my large SD cards are enough to store all my footage for until I get back home. And not bringing a laptop has made it way easier for me to maneuver around places while traveling. It makes it easier to carry for long periods of time, and it's way simpler when getting through airport security. So before your next trip, take a moment and think about if you actually need your laptop, because if you don't bring it, you can save a lot of time and energy. So those are the casual amateur and prosumer lineups. Let me know if you think I missed anything, or if you think that something deserves to be in a different lineup. And until next time.